when you're saying it's one in five um, people you've thrown into depression, that doesn't include the people that were already depressed and things got That's worse. That's the increase. That's the increase. We went from 8% of the U.S. population depressed to 27%, so a little more than 27, almost a 20% increase. It threw, the lockdowns threw almost 20% of the U.S. population into depression. I assume it's similar, maybe worse in Britain because your lockdowns were a little stricter than ours for the most part. Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends where you were. Um, it's and and also on on that, like if you're counting depression or a year of depression as a year of life lost, you're not really taking, you're not really even considering the fact that being the depression, like if you're really depressed, you're you're probably not looking after yourself that well. You're probably not in the best frame of mind, and that's not healthy in in like a long term. You're not you're not looking after yourself the best. You maybe ended up losing years of your life in the future due to the fact that yeah, you probably you know, are. You're right. I I don't know what the statistics are, and I just I just read a um a book by a Swedish physician on the lockdowns. It was published early in the lockdowns, and he actually estimates. I hadn't thought of this, but he estimates that because of keeping kids out of school for a year that decreases their life expectancy. And uh, uh, he's, he estimated it decreased their life expectancy by like five or six months, which seems kind of high to me, but, uh, but certainly decreased their life expectancy by something. And if it decreased their life expectancy by even a day, that would exceed the, the, the person years of life saved uh, and prevented COVID deaths. Hmm. I mean, the, it's... That's stunning as well to think about. Is that because they're, he's assuming that they didn't either get the education, the development, the learning, the growth? Um, uh, he didn't really explain didn't. it. I assume, um, I assume it's kind of a statistical thing that people with less schooling have a shorter have shorter lifespans than people with more schooling, which would have to do with lots of things, most mostly probably income. More schooling is going to lead to more income and people with higher income live live longer than people with shorter income. Mm. Um, in this case, I would I suppose you could question whether it would decrease their income in the sense that Every all of their classmates also were kept out of school, so every the, it's a lower lower playing field, but everybody's still on the same playing field. Mm. But I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's concerning. Like, and so where are you? Where are you finding these these figures? Like, where are you going to for your sources? Because I'm going to uh, exclusively, really, referee journal articles, the best quality I can find, and government, U.S. government, U.S. and and world government statistics uh, for COVID deaths. I use Worldometer, um, which is a website that's daily updating COVID deaths. That's another thing that got, that 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 uh, I mentioned in my book, and that that galls me is is we're told literally every day how many people died of COVID the previous day. We haven't even been told for maybe we've been told by two for 2019 by now. Certainly not 2020. How many people died from suicide or drug overdose in the United States? Yeah. <laughs> And we're increasing the suicide and drug overdose deaths. And they could they could accumulate those every day too if they cared about them, if they wanted to. Yeah, I mean, and and the the, the horrifying thing is that the, the media have been happily playing this up. I mean, I saw um, one of the the undercover uh, videos of of Jess Zucker, um, I think it was from from CNN, um, talking about how they it, they took it they took the death count away and then they were worrying that you know they they weren't amping up the fear enough to keep people glued to it and then they put oh, it back yeah. up like there were there was a, a time where they'd taken it away and then they decided to put it back because you know they they needed something to to hook people on and and that's that's a, just another horrifying side of this is the fact the media are happy for for a crisis to have clicks oh the media have been awful absolutely awful it's it's complete scaremongering about this and that it's the worst thing ever thanks for making it all the way to the end of the podcast don't forget our sponsor expressvpn and my book brexit the establishment civil war can both be found in the links in the description below and also please like share and subscribe to this podcast it's the best way to help us grow until next time thanks for listening Screw the hedge funds. You can make as many rules as you want, but if there's no teeth behind them, what's the point? Well, like Citadel is potentially just gone in a few months.
It feels like financial institutions, that they are all laughing at us by buying GME. <laughs> Screw the hedge funds. Like, I will lose my entire investment if it brings them down. Why on earth, last May, could you buy the entire company for $200 million? What's been happening on Reddit and in social media and in the marketplace? has never been seen before. I argue that nothing is off the table. There is nothing off the table when dealing with the volumes of money in something as big as the United States uh, stock market. The hedge funds have clearly underestimated a group of a group of people raised on Friday night World of Warcraft rates. Dark pools, they are they're another uh, mechanism to manipulate and cheat. Mainstream journalists don't say these things for a number of reasons. Uh, one is their sources are the people that I'm talking about, and so they can't call somebody a crook. Super Stonk and the other communities that have emerged are a hive mind, the likes of which we have never seen before. It's madness and brilliance, insanity and genius all rolled into one. It's very possible that Citadel will be gone in a few months. And, and not just Citadel, but the entire financial system has the potential to come crashing down. These crooks continue to gamble recklessly with the world economy, and this could be the moment that they finally get their justice.